Hey everyone, welcome to Scriptural Integrity. I'm Scott Clem. This is a channel where we take a look at modern issues and theological questions and look at them under the light of Scripture. Last time, uh, if you were with us, we looked at a video on apostasy and the Antichrist. And today we're going to be taking a deeper dive look at the word apostasy. What is this apostasy that we find in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2? Uh, so with that, let me uh, let me go ahead and throw this up here in the screen so you can follow along here. And just kind of a summary of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And by the way, we'll put up a link here so that you can see the previous video um, where we go over this a little more in depth. But essentially what you have is, is verses 1 through 3 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, which identify Christ's coming and our gathering. And it's called the Day of Christ. And the Bible tells us there, the Apostle Paul, that this day of Christ, Christ's coming in our gathering, won't occur until two things happen first. Namely, the falling away or apostasy and the Antichrist being revealed. And then he tells us in verse 4 some characteristics of this Antichrist and what the Antichrist is going to be like. And then there's this declaration and reminder there that's given to us in verses 5 and 6. In other words, Paul says in verse 5, don't you remember me telling you these things when I was yet with you? And then he concludes in verse number 6, now you know what withholdeth, uh, which is apostasy and the revealing of the Antichrist, that he, meaning Christ, might be revealed in his time. This is all about the revealing of Christ and when it's going to happen. And Paul says there's two things that need to happen before Christ comes and we're gathered home together with him. And then in verses 7 through 10, it talks about how the Antichrist will be revealed and how Christ destroys him at his coming. And so we we saw there that there's two things that have to happen before the day of Christ, i.e. Christ coming in our gathering. There needs, to have, there needs to come this falling away and this man of sin be revealed. Today we're going to focus more so on this idea of falling away and what is it. Well, the Greek word here is apostasia. And this is where we get the word apostasy. Now, apostasy is always used here in this negative connotation. In other words, it's never good to apostatize. It's, it's the idea of falling away or forsaking something. Like you have a standard of some sort and you fall away from that or you step back from that. In other words, it's, it's not good to fall away or step away or forsake whatever standard it is that, that, you, that you have or whatever it is that you're holding on to. And in this case here, the idea is to apostatize or to fall away from the faith. Now, we're not given many details here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 of what Paul means by falling away, right? Falling away from what? And, and what does that look like exactly? And, and, you know, is there anything that precipitates this? All of, those, all of those questions aren't really answered for us in the text. The, there's just not a whole lot given to us there. But what we do find is there are some references um, that we can look, like, look at elsewhere in the Scripture to get an idea of what this falling away, what this apostasy means. Uh, and so, so let, me, let me just start, first of all, with maybe what it's not. There are some people who believe that this apostasy means a departure from the earth, i.e. the rapture. Uh, that, in other words, God is going to rapture the church, and this is what this apostasy or this departure means. A departure, a catching away from the earth. Uh, and that's a creative way to use the word. The problem is, is it's never used in terms of a physical departure. Uh, and when you look at the, the, all of the ways that apostasy is used in the Bible, um, and even in, in ways that it's used in the Greek language, you wouldn't get this idea that it's a catching away or a rapture of the church. Furthermore, it's just confusing and it doesn't make sense. It's like saying that the day of Christ, Christ's coming and our gathering, won't happen until our gathering and the day of Christ is uh, and, and the Antichrist is revealed. It doesn't really make sense. Our gathering won't happen until our gathering. That's not what Paul is referring to here. So we know it's not that. 
And in the normal sense of this word, again, it's used for this idea of a departure, of, uh, of uh, a forsaking, um, more, more along the lines of, uh, of an idea or a construct or something like that. Well, uh, Matthew chapter 24 is the first place that I want to look, uh, look at here. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, in Matthew chapter 24, in verse 24, Jesus is giving a warning. And he says this, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, um, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So here Jesus warning, and he's saying, there's going to be false Christs, there's going to be um, uh, false prophets, and they're going to show you great signs and wonders, things that you see, things that you hear, and if you're not careful, you will be deceived, even the very elect will be deceived. And so the question is, is well, do we see these things happening today? Are there great signs and wonders that cause people to fall away from the faith? And, and in this case, I put to apost uh, apostasy and doctrine, to fall away from doctrine. And I think that absolutely we see these things play out. Let me, let me illustrate. Uh, for instance, there is the, the Latter-day Saint movement today, the Mormon religion. Well, how did that thing all start? Well, it started with a guy named Joseph Smith. And Joseph Smith claimed that he met an angel named Moroni, and this angel gave him some golden tablets, and he translated the language that was on the golden tablets, and that became the Book of Mormon. But here's the issue. Is that a great sign? Yeah. Is that a great wonder? Certainly. Would you be shocked if you saw an angel? Yeah, more than likely. If, in fact, uh, Joseph Smith is telling the truth and he saw an angel. But here's the thing to remember. What does doctrine tell us? What does the Word of God tell us? Well, Paul says, if, if there be anyone who, who comes and preaches another gospel whom we have... Uh, uh, whom you have not uh, received. If anyone preaches another gospel that, that we have not preached, let that man be accursed. And he says, though we or an angel from God preach any other gospel, let that person be accursed. Elsewhere, he talks about Satan's ministers, false prophets appearing as ministers of light. And Paul says, it should be no wonder that, that Satan's ministers appear as, uh, as ministers of light because Satan himself appears as an angel of light. You can read about that more in 2 Corinthians. The point is this. There was a departure from doctrine. Had Joseph Smith known his Bible, he would have known that he should believe the Bible and not something else as good as it sounds or as great as it looks. We see the same thing today with the Catholic Church. Take, for instance, some of the signs and wonders that, uh, that have happened throughout, the, throughout history. And consider this for a second, right? There are people who, who claim they have seen, and maybe you've seen pictures and things like that, of like statues, stone statues, shedding tears or perhaps other statues or figurines that are bleeding. Um, there's, there's people who have claimed that, uh, that they're the little wafer that they take for communion, the Eucharist, that it grows veins and there's actually blood that comes out of that. Or perhaps someone talks about a relic uh, from, from a, you know, a, a dead person's bones and the relic has healed someone or something like that. Uh, or perhaps they look up in the sky and they see some kind of apparition, some kind of vision. That's how I think the, the Lady of Fatima, uh, all of that came about where they, saw, uh, where they saw apparently the Virgin Mary in the sky. Now, pause there for just a second. Time out. Are all of those things great signs and wonders? Sure they are. I mean, if you saw those things or heard those things, you might think to yourself, boy, you know, that person being healed, that was just totally supernatural. And you would be tempted to come to the conclusion that that can't happen naturally, so that must be from God. Now listen, this is exactly what Jesus is warning about. He says there's going to come false prophets, and there's going to come false Christs, and they're going to show you great signs and wonders and if it were possible, it'll deceive the very elect. And so what's the issue here? The issue here is a departure, a, a falling away, an apostasy in doctrine, knowing what the Word of God says. In other words, you might put it this way. Let God be true and every man a liar. And here's what we're tempted to do. 
instead of believing God's Bible, instead of believing the Word, we're tempted to go along with what we see or with what we hear, and we're carried away with strange and diverse doctrines. And this is where this apostasy comes in, a falling away from doctrine, a falling away from the truth of God's Word. Listen, you ought to know what this book says and stand on it with your life, even if there's something that you cannot explain with your eyes. I mean, and there's lots of things like that, right? I mean, we look up at the night sky and people swear that there's UFOs and things like that. Uh, little lights flying around and there's little green men, right? Uh, no, not at all. Listen, that is that is satanic deception is what that is. Let God be true and every man a liar. What about those today who claim to be um, healers and things like that? Preaching preaching a false gospel like, like those of the prosperity gospel. There's many prosperity preachers, right? And they're going around and they're healing people, showing great signs and wonders. Are they really healing people though? I mean, these are magic tricks, folks, or, 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 or gimmicks. You know, they'll take one guy that apparently has a shorter leg and he'll, you know, make the leg longer and now the person doesn't lean anymore. You know, it's garbage like that. Listen, if there were true faith healers, then they would be going to St. Jude's Children's Hospital and curing those kids of cancer. But they're not doing that. And there's a reason because they're charlatans, they're snakes, and they're making merchandise of people. But what are they doing? They're showing great signs and wonders and they're deceiving the elect. Uh, or not the elect, they're deceiving people. And if it were possible to vary elect, and why is that? Because there's a departure of doctrine. People don't know the Word of God. Listen, this is why you should go to church and why you should be faithful in church, why you should stick your nose in your Bible, study it on your own, go to your pastor, ask questions, uh, get a good study, listen to sermons online or whatever the case may be, listen to good godly Christian music, fill yourself, saturate yourself with the Word of God and stand on this thing because this is how we resist. But there's going to come a falling away, an apostasy in the last times. It's going to be an apostasy in doctrine. And are we seeing that today? Absolutely, we're seeing that today. But there's another thing, and I think that's found in Luke chapter 8. And in Luke, uh, uh, excuse me, Luke chapter 18 and verse number 8. This, uh, this comes on the heels of the parable of the unjust judge. And Jesus says this at the end. He says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, right, talking about the second coming, when the Son of Man comes at the second coming, will he find, or he, he says, shall he find faith on the earth? Well, that's kind of a troubling statement uh, if you really think about that. Will he find faith on the earth? It's like, what are you saying, Jesus? That you're not going to find faith on the earth? And I think that's the idea here. In other words, there's going to be an apostasy in faithfulness. An apostasy in faithfulness. And I think we're seeing that in our very day and age. It's playing out. If you go to churches who still have a Sunday evening and a Wednesday evening service, there's going to be less and less of them. You'll notice there that the people uh, showing up, it seems, are becoming less and less as well. Now, maybe, maybe your church isn't like that, and you guys are growing strong for the Lord, in which case you should praise the Lord. But it seems that everybody else has other things that they want to do or need to do, right? They won't miss a ball game, and they won't, they won't miss work, or they won't miss some kind of social gathering, but they'll miss the gathering of believers in God's house. And what is that indica, uh, indicative, indicative of? Well, it's indicative of a apostasy or a falling away of faithfulness. Let me ask you something. Will you be faithful to God? Will you do what he tells you to do? Will you live for him? Will you be faithful to church? Will you be faithful to reading his word? Will you be faithful in preaching Christ to the lost? Will you be uh, faithful in carrying the gospel to others so that they can get saved? Will you be faithful in intercessory prayer? Will you be faithful? And folks, I'm afraid that we're, we're living in a time, and it seems, and, and the whole pandemic thing hasn't made it any better, where there's an apostasy in faithfulness. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And so I think as far as this deep dive session here, this falling away, this apostasy, entails not only an apostasy in doctrine, which we're seeing and have seen throughout the ages, but also an apostasy in faithfulness.
Hey, stay tuned. I'll put a link up here in this video because we're also going to be looking at apostasy. Uh, or it's not apostasy. The man of sin being revealed and do a deep dive on that. But thank you for being here. Uh, if you liked this video, if you enjoyed this, then give us a thumbs up, if you will. You can also share this with others if you think it will be helpful to them. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit that notifications bell and you will be notified when new videos come out. Until next time, God bless you. Take care.